Welcome to the Ames Free Library's final Imagination Run. I'm Miss Alicia, and I'll be your imagination guide. To go with this year's summer reading theme, Tales and Tales, each of these videos will feature a different creature with a tale. By using our imaginations, we're not just going to learn about these creatures, we're going to become them. We're going to move our bodies and use our minds, and I can't wait to get started. Are you ready to find out what kind of creature you're going to become today? So, so far, we've done bats and pigs, but today we're going to do something a little bit special. Today, we are going to be mermaids. How magical. But before we talk about what it's like to be a mermaid, we should talk a little bit about what it's like to be a human being. Did you know that you have a lot of water inside of your body? The average human being's body is made up of about 60% water. That's more than half of your body. That's a lot of water inside of you. If that much water is inside of a human, how much water do you think is inside of a mermaid? I bet it's even more. So to become a mermaid, I think we should put even more water inside of our bodies. And what we're going to do to do that is called a hydration meditation. And for this part, I'm going to sit down on the ground. So to do a hydration meditation, what you'll need is a glass of water. And if you need, you can pause the video and you can ask a grown up to help you get a glass of water from the kitchen. It doesn't need to be a fancy glass of water. You don't need ice cubes or anything like that in it, just plain water. And you can get like I have here, sort of a shorter cup, a smaller glass. And it looks like mine maybe has sea glass fired into it. Can you see all the pretty colors? But any glass, any cup from your kitchen will work. Just get a glass of water. And the other thing that you'll need when we're all done with our hydration meditation is a seashell. And you can get a seashell just like this from the children's room at the library. If you don't have time to do that right now, that's okay. You can always do it later because this hydration meditation that I'm about to show you is something that you can do every day, either by yourself or with a grown up. Um, it's really healthy and it's really good for you. So you can do this anytime. But you do need a glass of water today. So like I said, you can pause the video to get that if you need. But I've got my glass of water here. And basically, all a hydration meditation is, is we're going to sip and then breathe and sip and breathe until our glass of water is all gone. Before we get started, let's take a couple of deep breaths in so that you can practice. You're gonna breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Good. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Perfect. I think we're ready. So you'll get your glass of water and we're gonna take our first sip, ready? Make sure you swallow slowly and completely. And then take a deep breath in. And let it out. Take another sip. Think about the temperature of the water. Is it cold? Is it room temperature? Is it warm? I hope your water's not hot. <laughs> Unless you're having tea or something, right? But we're just doing water. So hopefully you've got a nice, cool glass of water. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Let it out. And take another sip. Let it wash over your tongue. And swallow. Take a deep breath in. 
and let it out. Take another sip. Mmm, is it nice and refreshing? My water is refreshing. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. And on this sip, I want you to think about how the water travels down your throat, maybe lands in your belly. See if you can feel it go all the way down. Take a sip. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. Take a sip. Swallow. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. How does the glass feel in your hand? Is it cold? It's a little bit wet and sweaty. <laughs> Feels good though, huh? Maybe your glass is bumpy like mine is, or maybe your glass is smooth. Take a sip of that water. And breathe in. Let it out. I think I've got only one more sip of water left. So I'm gonna take that sip, take a deep breath, and I'll be all done. If you have more water left, if you maybe had a bigger glass of water or you took smaller sips, that's okay. You can always pause the video and finish your glass of water, sipping and breathing, and sipping and breathing, and then plus play when you're done. I'm gonna take my last sip, are you ready? Take that sip of water. And breathe in and let it out. Good. That was a good glass of water. A nice mindful glass of water. And it's important to hydrate, isn't it? It's something that I forget to do. I just drink iced coffee and then I'm like, why don't I feel very good? <laughs> it's because I haven't drank any water. You have to drink lots of water. So it's good to start out your day with a mindful glass of water. <laughs> and to congratulate yourself for hydrating, we're gonna do something else that's pretty cool. And for that, you need your wishing shell. So like I said, you can get these from the library. We have plenty in a big basket. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold it and make a wish. And I also have with these wishing shells, these papers here, which are some ideas for what you might wish for. It says, today I wish to be, and it helps you set intentions for your day. Think of a really good wish for what you want your day to be like. So it says things like, today I wish to be as happy as a clam, or as clever, as smart as an octopus. Or maybe today I wish to be as graceful as a mermaid. And when you look at this set of intentions, you might see some things that you don't know. You might see some words you don't know, like, hmm, like as resilient as a starfish. And you might think, what does resilient mean? Or why is a starfish resilient? Or you might see, hmm, today I wish to be as fashionable as a nudibranch. A nudibranch? Do you even know what that is? Have you ever heard that word before? What's a nudibranch? And this is the perfect opportunity to do a little bit of research. You can come to the library and check out our dictionaries or our books about sea creatures. We have a lot of those. But at the very least, I really think you should do a Google image search for nudibranch and you can see what they look like because they are very bold and very colorful. They are style icons. Pretty amazing. <laughs> All right, and you can think of your own too, but I'm gonna look at my list and I'm gonna hold my seashell and I'm gonna pick one. I think today I wish to be 
as relaxed as a jellyfish. I want to go with the flow. So you can say it out loud or you can think it to yourself. Today I wish to be as relaxed as a jellyfish. You can close your eyes and picture yourself as whatever you wish to be, relaxed, just like a jellyfish. I can picture myself floating in the ocean, floating on the currents, just going where the water takes me, right? Not worrying about where I'm going or when I have to be there, not worrying about the destination, just enjoying the ride. I'm going to be relaxed today, as relaxed as a jellyfish. What are you going to be? What do you wish to be? <laughs> All right. So now that we have put some more water inside of our bodies, and now that we're working on granting our own wishes, did you know that mermaids are supposed to have the power to grant wishes? <laughs> now that we've done that, we can talk more about mermaids. What is a mermaid anyway, right? What's a mermaid, do you know? A mermaid is a creature that's half human and half fish. So the top part of them is the human part. They have a human head and human shoulders and human arms and human bellies. But then from the waist down, they're kind of like a fish. They have a tail, right? They have a big, long, beautiful, flowing, glittering, sparkling tail. And that, my friends, is a mermaid. But what does a mermaid really look like? You know what? I have a book and I can show you. This book is called Mermaids. It's by Carl Meister. It's illustrated by Xavier Bonet. And it is published by Picture Window Books. This is Mermaids. And it has a great diagram of a mermaid inside. This is what a mermaid might look like. So as you can see, mermaids have eyes that sort of look like human eyes. It says a mermaid has excellent vision and can see easily in dark waters, kind of like cats with their night vision. And a mermaid has ears. It says a mermaid can hear well, both underwater and on land. Her ears are long and they're pointy, right? They look a little bit like fins. And this is my favorite part. It says, a mermaid has teeth. A mermaid's teeth are long and sharp. It's like a lot of fangs inside of a mermaid's mouth. And that's something that you don't really see in movies or on TV shows when you see mermaids, right? Those fangs, those sharp teeth in her mouth. But I think it's pretty cool. And I think it makes sense that a mermaid would have fierce teeth, right? If you think about all of the fierce teeth on sea creatures in the ocean, like a shark has sharp teeth. And a barracuda, that's a type of tropical fish, a barracuda has sharp teeth. So a mermaid has sharp teeth too. And of course, of course, a mermaid has a tail. This is her long, beautiful tail. It says the mermaid's powerful tail is often covered in scales. One tail is common but some mermaids have two tails. So this is what a mermaid might look like. And this one you can see has sort of dark black hair, but some people say that mermaids don't have black hair and they don't have blonde hair and they don't have red hair like the little mermaid. Some people say that mermaids have green hair, green hair, and it's made out of seaweed. I think that's very cool. I might like to have green seaweed hair. <laughs> So that's a mermaid. And now we know what a mermaid looks like, but what does a mermaid do? So there are legends that say that mermaids have special powers. And we've already talked about how mermaids can grant wishes, right? Can they do anything else? Some legends say that mermaids can predict the future. They know what's gonna happen before it actually happens. And some legends say that mermaids can heal or cure sickness. If someone's not feeling very well, they can make them feel better automatically. 
Some legends say that mermaids live a long, 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 long time. Some le legends say that mermaids are brave warriors, fierce warriors, and they fight and they save other sea creatures from sea monsters. And finally, some stories say that mermaids have beautiful, enchanting voices, and they sing and they put a spell on people. So those are all some things that mermaids might do. Who knows? <laughs> and there are stories about mermaids from all over the world. And some of them are just like our mermaid stories. And some of the stories are a little bit different. For instance, in Africa, there is a water spirit called Mama Wati. And that means Mommy water. <laughs> and Mama Wati is a mermaid, right? With a fin like you might expect. But she's also a snake charmer. Can you see that snake wrapped around her neck? I bet it's a water snake. And she can make the water snakes do whatever she wants them to. They'll do her bidding. So that's Mama Wati from Africa. There are also mermaid legends from Ireland. There are creatures called marrows, and they wear a red hat. It's like a mermaid and a red hat, sort of like a combination between the Little Mermaid and Little Red Riding Hood. And all of the mermaid's magical powers come from her red hat. They say that if you were to steal her wet red hat and take it off, she wouldn't have a beautiful fin or be able to live underwater anymore. She would just have boring old human legs and have to spend the rest of her days on land. And finally, I wanna tell you about a Scottish creature that's from Scotland called a Selkie. And Selkies are shape-shifting creatures. They can switch back and forth between being a human and being a seal. And I think that's pretty cool. I think if I were a mermaid creature, I'd wanna be a Selkie. Because seals, they just get to lie around all day in the sun sunbathing and they get to go swimming all the time and eat lots of fish. And that sounds like a pretty good life to me. <laughs> That's a selkie. So there are mermaids, many more stories about mermaids all over the world. But the question is, are mermaids real? And the bad news is that science says probably not. Science doesn't really believe in mermaids. And that's because in addition to not having like good pictures or good videos of mermaids, what we don't have is a mermaid skeleton, right? So there are creatures that we know have existed, like dinosaurs, think about dinosaurs. Have you ever seen a dinosaur before? I haven't. I've never seen a dinosaur in real life, but we have their bones, we have their skeletons, their fossils, right? And that's how we know that dinosaurs really lived on Earth. But we don't have any mermaid's bones. We don't have any mermaid fossils or skeletons. So science says, can't prove it, doesn't exist. But here's the good news. The ocean is a big, enormous, huge place, right? And the ocean, it's not explored. We've only explored a small piece of the ocean, 20%. That means that 80% of the ocean is unexplored. Nobody's ever seen it before. Nobody's visited it before in their lives. 80% of the ocean is unexplored. So maybe mermaids do live in that 80% of the ocean. Maybe they live in a quiet corner under the sea. We just don't know. So even if mermaids, real mermaids, don't exist, which maybe they do, we don't know. <laughs> but if they don't exist, there are performers who are almost as magical as mermaids. And these performers, you can visit them if you go to Bournemouth, England, or if you go to certain places in Florida where they perform. They wear long tails and they go swimming in front of a big audience. And some of them even swim with sharks and with stingrays. They're professional 
mermaids. Did you know that that was a job? Is that what you want to be when you grow up, a professional mermaid? And then in some places, like in some Asian countries, like Japan and South Korea, there is a tradition of women free divers. And what they do is they dive down deep, deep, deep in the ocean without any equipment. So they don't have an oxygen tank or a snorkel. They just can hold their breath. They've trained to hold their breath for a really long time. In Japan, they're called ama. And in South Korea, they're called henyo. And these women, they go down, they hold their breath for three minutes and they get all sorts of sea creatures. They can get octopus and lobsters and crabs and sea urchins and abalone, and then they bring them back up to the surface with them. And what they do is they sell these sea creatures to make money for their community, or they use these sea creatures to feed their community so that everybody in their community can eat. And that's really, really important. And these women can also stay in the water up to five or six hours, even in the winter. They're pretty amazing. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that women are pretty magical and that people can be pretty magical too. <laughs> so our last step of transforming into a mermaid is to sing. Remember how we said that mermaids have enchanting, magical singing voices? So we're gonna sing to really be a mermaid. And for this, I'm first gonna stand up on my feet. All right, here we are. And the first thing we're gonna do is a sun salutation. We're gonna put our feet next to one another and we are going to Stretch up, oh, as tall as we can. Stretch up towards the sun. And a sun salutation is to say thank you to the sun. Thank you for shining on us. Thank you for shining on the waves and making them sparkle. Thank you for warming the waters and the world. Stretch up, up, up in the blue, blue sky. And then we're gonna dive down deep into the blue, blue waters towards our tails. Ready? And we're gonna sit down, go onto your knees, and then onto your bottom. And we are going to put our long, beautiful tails out in front of us. And we're gonna make our fingers into seaweed. And we're gonna stretch towards the tips of our beautiful tails. Wiggle those seaweed fingers. <laughs> and then we're gonna swish our tails over to the side. So you'll have one part of your leg in front of you and one leg behind you. And we're gonna sit up tall on our rocks Put our hands down and turn and look over our shoulders. Can you see any ships looking over your shoulder? Hmm. And then put your tail out in front of you again. Stretch, stretch, stretch. And get those seaweed fingers out again and reach towards your tail. You should feel that stretch in your fins. Wiggle those seaweed fingers and swish your tail the other way. One in front and one behind. Sit up straight on your rock and look over your shoulder. Can you see any ships? Do you see Prince Eric coming? I don't see Prince Eric. Do you see Max? I would love to see Max, that big shaggy dog. No max today, no ships today. And put your fin out in front of you again. And we are going to sing. And you can judge if I sing enchantingly enough to be a mermaid. I've got my own opinions about that. <laughs> but we are going to sing a song called Peace Like a River. And this version is something that I learned from Yo Ray Me 
which is a musical yoga program for kids out of New York City. This is Peace Like a River. And it's got some repetitive uh, words and some repetitive motions. So hopefully you can sing and do them along with me and be a mermaid too. Here we go. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. <laughs> I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. So I hope you're feeling peaceful and graceful and strong and beautiful and creative. Thank you for being a mermaid with me. Thank you for imagining with me. I hope you had a good time. If you want to learn more about mermaids or if you want to hear about my favorite mermaid picture books or my favorite mermaid chapter books, make sure you watch the companion video called Miss Alicia Recommends. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Bye.